Hi, I'm Chris Wardlaw for CarGurus, and this is the new 2018 Volkswagen Atlas. And it's my new favorite midsize SUV. Heck, it's almost a full-size SUV. And that's one of the many great things about it. For those of you who are unaware of the Atlas, it is a three-row, seven-passenger crossover SUV with bold styling, a big interior, and all the bells and whistles that modern American families want. Well, except for a rear seat entertainment system. But you can get optional tablet computer holders so that the kids can plug in and tune out. All right, that's enough preamble. Let's take a closer look at the new Volkswagen Atlas. Aside from its cheese grater grill and its fender haunches, the new Atlas's boxy conservative design should age pretty well. Now, prices start at $31,425 for a base model, while my platinum gray top of the line SEL premium trim level runs $49,415. Ah, man, that's pricey, isn't it? And unfortunately, you've got to get the SEL premium in order to get real leather seats and the handsome 20-inch wheels as standard equipment. But to put that price into context, it's in the same ballpark as a loaded Buick Enclave, Ford Explorer, or Honda Pilot. It's also $1,500 cheaper than the most basic Audi Q7 that you can buy, and it's $2,500 cheaper than a Chevy Tahoe with four-wheel drive and not a single option on it. Wait, isn't the Tahoe a full-size SUV? Well, yeah, technically. But when you open one of this Volkswagen's doors, the first thing you're gonna notice about the Atlas is that it is big, huge even. The front seats are large and supportive. They feature heating and ventilation in the SEL Premium model. The second row seats slide forward and back on tracks, and when they're placed in the middle position, they remain quite comfortable. Separate climate controls are also included for some models, and both rear rows of seats benefit from air conditioning vents. Adults fit into the third row seat with no problem. Now, riding back there isn't exactly comfortable, but it's no worse than getting crammed into a 737 for a cross-country flight, and that makes the Atlas a legitimate substitute for a minivan. To me, the Atlas feels larger and more accommodating than the aforementioned Chevy Tahoe, and several measurements related to the rear seats do bear that out, especially with regard to the third row. All three measurements of cargo space are also superior to the full-size Chevy. Behind the rear seat, the Atlas provides 20.6 cubic feet of volume. If you fold the third row seat down, now you've got 55.5 cubic feet of luggage space. Maximum capacity measures a whopping 96.8 cubic feet. Unlike many vehicles that are designed by German car companies, the Atlas is equipped with controls, that are really easy to figure out and which are located right where you expect to find them. My test vehicle has Volkswagen Digital Cockpit, which is this digital instrumentation system with different themes that the driver can choose from. Now using it, you can program profiles for up to four different drivers. You can access a variety of information and adjust numerous vehicle settings. Uh, you can even shrink the gauges and maximize the navigation map. It's all pretty cool. Volkswagen's latest infotainment technology is on board too. My test vehicle has the top Discover audio setup with an 8-inch display mounted behind flush proximity sensing and capacitive touch glass. There's a volume knob here, there's a tuning knob here, and there are eight well-marked menu shortcuts, and it all looks modern and slick. Right now, as we shoot this review, Every Atlas has a 276 horsepower 3.6 liter V6 engine, an eight speed automatic transmission, and a choice between front wheel or all wheel drive. This combination is rated to tow up to 5,000 pounds. Later in the year, Volkswagen plans to offer a turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine for the Atlas. It's going to produce 235 horsepower and eight fewer pound feet of torque compared to the V6, but the power and the torque will be accessible at lower RPM. And maybe that will be okay. Maybe it won't. I mean, an Atlas weighs more than two tons, and that's before you stuff any people or cargo into it. Plus, the turbo is going to require premium fuel. This V6 runs on regular. It is a thirsty beast, though. The EPA says it should get 19 miles per gallon in combined driving, and I averaged 18.2 miles per gallon on my test loop. This, despite automatic engine stop start, and an all-wheel drive system that automatically decouples the rear axle from the drivetrain in order to help conserve fuel. Now, four different driving modes are available with this powertrain, along with 
four different terrain settings. You can also choose between normal and sport mode for the transmission. I liked driving the Atlas best when everything was set to sport, which could explain my fuel economy result. Aside from quicker throttle response and more natural shifting from the transmission, sport mode adds a much needed sense of heft to the otherwise feather light steering. Acceleration is satisfying, if not thrilling. Handling is capable, if not quite inspiring. No doubt, the big 20 inch wheels and tires help in this regard, and the more curves I tossed the Atlas around, the more confident I became in the SUV's ability to go fast on a twisty mountain road. The all-wheel drive system can transfer power front to rear and between wheels on the same axle. So when exiting a couple of corners, the big Atlas actually felt like it squatted down, dug in, and shot forward. Still, this is a large SUV, and while body roll is reasonably well controlled, it does sit up high and it bounces around a bit. The narrower the road, the more you need to pay close attention. The brakes did resist fade though, despite repeated abuse, and the steering proved accurate, if relatively numb. Now on the highway at speed, the Atlas feels solid and secure, especially if you've got the lane keeping assist system turned off and the SUV is in sport driving mode. Around town, passenger head toss is a problem when driving on imperfect pavement because the Atlas easily rocks from side to side. No matter what kind of road you're on, the suspension needs to do a better job of filtering out bumps and cracks and holes in the pavement. From the driver's seat, it sounds and feels brittle, and I can't believe this is strictly due to the larger wheels and tires on the SEL Premium. In fact, the whole time I've been driving this new SUV, I've been thinking that it could use an adaptive damping suspension. But then I remember the price tag's already approaching 50 grand, and that would probably push it over. Since this is a family SUV, there's one more thing we have to talk about, and that is safety. Now, as I'm reviewing this SUV, it hasn't been subjected to crash tests, so I can't really comment on how well it's going to protect you and your loved ones out in the real world. What I can say is that once I shut off the lane keeping assist system, the remaining driver assistance and collision avoidance technologies worked quietly in the background to help prevent ill-advised moves and collisions. And previously, I mentioned that the Alice is available with CarNet subscription services. The basic service is free, while the mid-grade service adds a lot of useful features that you'll need to pay for after the free six-month trial period. And they include automatic collision notification, SOS emergency calling, and something called Family Guardian, which provides speed and boundary alerts, which are particularly useful to parents of teenage drivers. The new Volkswagen Atlas isn't perfect. Some of the interior plastic doesn't square with the SEL Premium's price tag. The V6 engine's fuel economy is more like a V8's. Suspension crash and ride motions are excessive. The navigation system isn't particularly useful. The air conditioning takes a long time to cool off the cabin. And if you take a look at consumer reports, well, reliability isn't exactly a Volkswagen calling card. Nevertheless, I'd buy one. I like the looks, I like the interior design, I like the seats and the cargo space, I like the features and controls, and for the most part, I like the way it drives. Plus, Volkswagen gives you a six year, 72,000 mile, fully transferable, bumper to bumper warranty for added peace of mind. Be sure to check out my full review of the Atlas on cargurus.com. If you found this review helpful, please share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For all of us at Cargurus, thank you for watching.